So my parents would take me up to Gettysburg at least twice a summer from the time I was 10 until I was old enough to drive myself. And the first time that we went to Gettysburg, I absolutely fell in love with that landscape. And I just thought even back in that day, when I was really that young, it was just a really awesome thing that we had made a decision to protect and preserve these places in perpetuity. I actually started to create a small library about Civil War battles and Gettysburg and other things like that. And uh, that's how I got started with my passion for American history, American military history, was at Gettysburg. It's been a real pleasure uh, working for NPCA to get to bring board and staff members up to the battlefield of Gettysburg to show them the battlefield as I know it. And not just as a site where we're talking about bayonets and bullets, but where we're talking about the history, that kind of hidden history that really makes the Battle of Gettysburg so significant and so important. And one of the things that I never realized as a kid, walking and seeing all the cannons and all the statues of the guys with guns, is that in the middle of that battlefield, there's a White House and barn it was owned by a man named Abraham Bryan. He was a free African-American man who lived there with his wife and I think three kids. And they're at the center of the Pickett's Charge battlefield. And I think it's just incredibly poignant in terms of the relationship and the connection through our history our shared national narrative that at the heart of Gettysburg National Military Park is the story of an African-American family. When they found out the Confederates were coming north, they got the heck out of Dodge because they knew what was going to happen. But the 11th Mississippi Infantry Regiment, coming all that way, fighting in that campaign, used Abraham Bryan's White House and Barn as a guide on in that assault. And so these things are very much connected. And there's a lot of room on the American historic mantelpiece for all these stories and more. And what I like most about Gettysburg and other national park units is that they tell the full sweep of American history. You know, growing up learning about the Park Service, I think about these big landscape-wide parks like Yellowstone and Yosemite. And what I realized working at NPCA is that there's a much wider range of what the Park Service does and stories that they tell. 100% of our national parks have historic and cultural resources that they interpret, manage, and protect. Getting the word out about that is really important because not very many people understand the breadth and depth of the role that the National Park Service plays in helping to protect and promote our shared national narrative. It's not just the park sites, two thirds of the system being historic and cultural, and then that remaining one third having lots of historic and cultural resources to interpret and protect. But the National Park Service also manages the National Register of Historic Places, the National Historic Landmarks Program, uh, funding for the Historic Preservation Fund, and a number of other programs that really help to protect and promote our history, but also help to democratize the process of historic preservation in this country. The Park Service plays a critical role in all that. More people need to know about that. That's part of our advocacy.